What are real estate taxes? Well, there are different types of real estate taxes. So I want to talk to you about two primary types. One taxes on the value of the property or property taxes, and the other is taxation on the value or gain realized from the sale or disposition of property. Okay, so to start with, number one, property taxes. We oftentimes call property taxes um, the millage rate assessed by the local government. Okay, so millage rates, uh, antiquated term, but basically what it says is that you take the fair market value of the real estate that you own, and then you multiply it by some ratio factor assessed by the local government. And then that gives you an amount or some fixed value that you have to pay for owning that. Right. Uh, another word for personal property, generally not real property, not real estate, is the ad valorem. That is the value of the property that you own. Uh, but more commonly, you hear ad valorem with prop with individual uh, personal property, and then you hear the uh, property taxes or millage rate associated with real property. Okay, now there are specific exemptions that will help you lower the amount that uh, you have to pay in property taxes. Uh, generally, these exemptions are things like if you live on the property, uh, you can often get what's called a homestead exemption up to a certain amount. Oftentimes, it cuts the value down by some percentage, or, or um, oftentimes it's a, a fixed amount based upon certain characteristics, uh, like if you're above a certain age or you're in an age bracket, that it reduces the amount to which you are liable for property taxes. Uh, generally, these exemptions come in the form of uh, reducing how the value of uh, your property is assessed or reducing the amount to which uh, the property will be subject to tax. So that comes in both those forms. Uh, now, there are state and federal taxes applicable to the disposition of property. So while local government tax taxes property or the value of property to bring in revenue for thing, to fund uh, local uh, efforts such as uh, school system, fire department, police department, things of that nature, the state and federal government uh, taxes income or gain from the disposition or sale of real estate. Okay, so oftentimes this is only taxed uh, once the gain is realized. And that term realized means that uh, you actually receive that value from the sale or disposition. There are all sorts of possible deferments available for that, such as um, if you uh, sell business property and you immediately uh, take the funds received from the sale of that business property, any gains that you've received, and reinvest those gains in new property that you hold. Uh, that's a 1031 or, or depending on the nature of the transaction, uh, tax exchange or tax switch, if you will, whereby you basically keep the same basis, the amount that you paid for the property that you sold in the new property uh, if you use all of the gain realized uh, from the sale of that property to purchase the new property. You can basically just step into the same position with the new property that you were in with the old property in terms of the amount that you are attributed to have paid for it and things of that nature. So there you go. That's a possible deferral. Now, there are exemptions from uh, taxation on the gain attributed, attributable to property. Uh, one notable example is uh, the sale of a personal primary residence. If you have gain on the sale of your personal home and you've lived there for the requisite amount of time, which is generally two years under the federal code, uh, you can exempt $250,000 per individual or $500,000 per married couple of gain from that property. So if I buy a home for uh, $500,000 and uh, I later sell it for $750,000, if I've lived there for the requisite amount of time, I can defer 
that recognition of gain for that period. If I'm married, I could defer up to $500,000 uh, in gain from the sale of that property. So again, that's a form of exemption whereby you would not pay taxes on the sale or disposition of property. Now, it is important to note that if you are subject to gain, that uh, that form of income has its own or a unique income tax rate. If you have short-term gains, that is you held property for less than one year and then sold it, then you are subject to uh, taxation rate, uh, commence rate, well, whatever your personal income tax rate is, okay, uh, whatever percentage that is. Now, if you've held the asset for longer, you've held the real estate for more than one year, then you are subject to a cap long-term capital gains rate, as they call it, and that can either be 0, 15, or 20 percent, depending on uh, your income level. If you do not have any income or you have a very low threshold income, you may not be subject to any taxation on that gain. Most people are subject to either 15 percent or 20 percent uh, capital gains rate on that property uh, based upon the amount of income they earn separate from the sale of that asset. So in summary, this is how real estate taxes work. Local taxes based upon the value of the property and state and federal taxes based upon uh, any gains realized from the sale or disposition of that property.